Welcome to Seizing Valor, where we discover God's path for manhood, one conversation at a time. I'm Joe. I'm Josh. You've got questions. <laughs> <laughs> oh, too. what a good throwback. There but no go. Zach today. Where is Zach? Zach is and in Maryland right? right now. That's right. right. He's doing a retreat right now. He's leading a retreat, part of his job, uh, but we miss him. Um, and today we are going to be talking about negative role models portrayed in Hollywood media, all lovely things. And yeah, yeah. Uh, pretty much the rule of thumb is that you probably shouldn't trust any of those male role models. Just look at it with, take it with a grain of salt. Look at it with rose colored glasses, the opposite of that. I don't know the right analogy. I should probably stop talking. <laughs> You're doing great, Joe. <laughs> I'll, I'll think of the right analogy at like 2.30 in the morning. All right, so we'll be talking about male role models that, you know, just don't quite fit the bill. You know, they're, they're, they're just there, or basically not at all. <laughs> <laughs> basically any type of movie or TV show or even book, who just doesn't fit the bill, Josh? Well, you get the, the clear and present examples like Homer Simpson, right? Yeah. I mean, he's kind one. of the arch archetypical male father and kind of seen in the culture in mm. society mm -hmm. it's like the it's like it's supposed to be exaggerated but at the same token it's become like almost commonplace for like, yeah it's also become like a literally me type of character that people identify yeah. with yeah exactly which is yeah, he's, a, he's a father he's a husband he's a safety inspector springfield springfield mass yeah um <laughs> new uh, power plant uh he works there uh and despite all of those you know ch uh, responsibilities that he has at home and work he just doesn't take any of it seriously right right yeah uh yeah, and he's yeah exactly lazy. Drink, you know, drinks a lot of beer is lazy mm -hmm. um spends a lot of time on the couch watching tv and that's mm -hmm. like the archetypical medial media image of what a man is you know i'm not a big fan of the simpsons as a whole uh I've, i know like some characters or tv shows do it better mm -hmm. um but whenever he's home i've always remembered that when he he makes jokes about you know running to you know the tavern whenever type of family issue like pops up you know mm -hmm. leave the wife to handle everything yeah you know? and then leading in the drink to exactly ease you Trying to make it feel better or whatever. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, and then so that's that's a good example. And then you get someone like Peter Griffin, who's just yeah. kind of like an idiot like an idiot, you know. Yeah, he's he's an idiot. I mean, like, but at the end of an every every single episode, he kind of realizes the error of his ways and then it kind of goes back to square one like later right. on. So at least that's like one tier above. I kind of want to do like, you know, like those tier rankings one day <laughs> uh, of all the negative, <laughs> male, negative stereotypes. male stereotypes and yeah. TV shows and books um, and movies. <laughs> yeah, um, Peter Griffin, extremely like, oh, a stupid, lazy alcoholic, uh, misogynistic, even like if you could say uh, right. cruel to his wife. Um, but of course, reserves that for his child, Meg, who, you know, we know doesn't deserve it. Um, <laughs> but like Homer Simpson, you know, neglecting children uh in favor of going to the pub uh whatever it's called in rhode island what is it with like the northeast that like just yeah, it's yeah, so easy it's to not... make fun of uh yeah, and getting drunk with his friends like joe and quagmire and cleveland um yeah yeah when he's not spending time ruining lois's passions because that happens almost all the time right, yeah. just to be to me exactly and i think more of like a recent example is like jerry from rick and morty oh yeah and, tell and me he, about that i don't uh, watch rick and morty yeah. yeah so he is just someone who like his marriage is falling apart he's not mm -hmm. really willing to he's not like he's not like a man mm -hmm. he's like a kind of a, like effeminate not in the sense of his character but like mm -hmm. in the fact that he's he's lacking in like the masculine traits to like yeah. save his family mm -hmm. or to like save his marriage to like protect his kids or whatever mm -hmm. like and so as a result he just he's just like a pushover type who just like wants to do what he wants to do and everything else is just like he's just like the weakest worst example of what a man is you know oh yeah um yeah yeah so there's that that's a good example so yeah so i mean there's tons where it shows all of like the horrible things about men 
and and uh, you know obviously we just just gave three examples in their, in their comedies right like they're mm-hmm. intended to be exaggerated aspects of you know and exaggerated traits to kind of bring humor into the home or maybe even like a self-reflection or like a, a self what's the what's the word where you see something that you can relate to so you kind of point and laugh at it because they're like oh like i have that too or like whatever oh yeah so, um, and I suppose the problem with it is maybe it was meant originally to be an exaggeration because male role models back in the 80s when like uh, The Simpsons first aired, not a lot of men seemed to be like that. But at the same time, same token, a lot of men have identified with Homer Simpson as the culture has changed. Kind of like yeah. a literally me type of character, which I found interesting. Yeah. Like as time has progressed, you see kind of uh... – uh, leaning into the more negative traits of of what a man is, mm-hmm. and 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 some could argue that um, maybe these depictions have encouraged a certain behavior, like these behaviors mm-hmm. within us. Maybe mm-hmm. if people don't have a lot of positive male stereotypes or positive role models of mm-hmm. male in their life. They may see these characters on, on the screens and on the shows that they're watching, mm-hmm. and may f- feel like that's what that's what it is, you know. Mm-hmm. So maybe there's something there too, but who knows? I'm not a doctor. Um, if we can't think of any more like negative ones, what's a positive one that you can probably think of? Whoa, I would say the book "The Road." Yeah, by Cormac McCarthy. I don't know. Did you watch the movie, or have you have you read the book or anything? No, I have not. Road. That is the archetypical positive male stereotype, mm-hmm. like positive male role model, mm-hmm. right there in his actions. I don't want to give too much away, but basically, he gives everything for his son, mm-hmm. and to ensure that he's safe in a post-apocalyptic world. Yeah. And it's absolutely incredible. It's very inspiring. And so that that's a good example in mm. le- in leadership, in sacrifice, in you know teaching and education, in cultivating, in protecting. It's all there. It's all there in that character. Like all mm. these traits that you expect, uh, uh, well, that a man should be like you know, um, is in that character. Oh, what yeah. about you, Joe? Can you think of a good positive? The only one that I was thinking of, and this is actually not like I can think of so many other better ones, but just right now, the one thing that came into my mind when asking that question was actually Marlon from Finding Nemo. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Why would I say that? I mean, like the fact that he would just like go to the ends of the earth and the ocean to look for his son who he doesn't even know because the ocean is massive. 70% of our planet is filled with that. And he would just continue until his last dying breath. I just find that so poetic and so encouraging. Yeah. That he would abandon his life of complacency at home, Mm -hmm. his his comfort to go outside of that, to go save his son. And he was going to have so many kids too. Uh, and it was going to be like Marlon Jr., Marlon Jr., Jr., something or something like that. <laughs> and then the only one that was left that his wife who got eaten, uh, all his kids got eaten except for the one who was going to be the Nemo, you know. Yeah. Um, really great intro to a movie, real sad, but, you know, it just tells you everything about him that he would, you know, yeah, do everything yeah. in honor, for, you know, for his woman, for his um, – and for her last uh, – her dying wish in a way. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Because that's, that's what it means to be uh... – man i think Mm. a good husband a good father is to lay on your life for your beloved Mm -hmm. in the in the sense of like you know in some circumstances literally laying down your life but others just just being able to sacrifice for Mm. the the greater good to uplift those around you as you kind of lower yourself not in a pseudo you know false humility but Mm -hmm. just an understanding that that's what we're intended to do Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. as opposed to just take and to to be complacent to sit on our bum and you know absorb the world and what the world tells us to absorb like we should be laying all of that down detaching and instead you know being that 
uplifting, encouraging, mm-hmm. faithful person. Mm-hmm. My other one now that I just thought about it was probably Danny Tanner. <laughs> yeah. Or Uncle yeah. Jesse. It's definitely like a stereotypical man, I think. Yeah. The Danny, the Danny Tanner type. Definitely not his life went uh, off camera. No, not at all. The yeah. man like swore up a storm, <laughs> which is pretty hilarious. I'm sure he was oh, still yeah. fine. I think it uh, added to his comedy the fact that he was such a clean <laughs> person on that show. <laughs> Absolutely crazy. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. So I think it's important for us to always lean into, like, to recognize something as funny because, um, what am I trying to say? Yeah, don't get me wrong. I still enjoy uh, an episode or two of Family Guy. One, because I'm able to compartmentalize and say, like, I would never act like that. It's just the sheer absurdity. Yeah, Not exactly. And I think that's that was always the intention, you know, like, I, mm-hmm. like, I, I do like The Simpsons. I think it's pretty funny. Mm-hmm. Um, and just the fact that how how dumb Homer is just adds to the humor. Yeah. Of the show, but I think a know? lot of people just aren't able to separate, separate themselves. From, yeah. yeah. And the temptation yeah. of that that's uh, been ingrained in our culture. I won't go more to in the negative, maybe another time, but uh, a lot of people just struggle with that. Yeah. No, they they definitely do. They definitely do. I know a lot of people in my life who who struggle with that, with that reality of, and it's easy. It's easy for a man to fall into that. Like I think it's it's very simple for complacency, for laziness. You know, you know all of the typical sins of of lust and sloth and gluttony, like the human experience, as it kind of, you know, it, it can pierce male yeah it's such a quiet it's such a quiet and quick thing to fall but a lot of guys don't realize what they think rather they think it's far more terrible to admit that they've fallen such a quiet Mm. thing to fall but more terrible to admit it which is not true true. you should admit it but that's what they think yeah yeah definitely it's always much better to try to open to be open, to be vulnerable about those faults, and then to to grow as a as a result, mm-hmm. and then just remember like what it means to be a good man, and to hold that as like the common goal, the goal here. Like I want to be a good man, and what does that look like? If you don't know what that looks like, then what does it matter? Like if there's if it's not rooted in anything, even if yeah, then you'll fall into the typical stereotypical view of what a, mm-hmm. what a man is. You know, one thing that I will link right on our top screen uh what it means to be a man going back throwback to that previous episode so if you want to check that out please do so how was your weekend josh or how was your week because it's been yeah it's been, been a hot, hot minute, minute. Well, so we've been trying to get more dvds because we were excited about watching movies and actually owning dvds so like yeah. this idea of like going to a thrift store buying a dvd mm-hmm. taking it home and then watching it with the kids mm-hmm. and so we did that today and so we were super excited about it. So we went to this thrift store and uh, took the kids, all the, all the kids there. They were, they were great. They were so good in the store. Um, and I found so many fire DVDs and I was so excited about it. What? I saw Shawshank Redemption. Oh, get I it. I saw, I found, yeah, I found, what else did I find? Um, there was like some Disney movies that I was really impressed that they had. So those banger old ones. Yeah. 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 It was like The Little Mermaid and that movie will teach your boys to become as handsome as possible so that go. a girl can objectify him. The true goals. <laughs> well, you can think that in Little Mermaid, all that Ariel wants is a handsome guy. She, that's, that's all true. she said. That's his only quality. He's very handsome, isn't he? Guarantee you. Watch it. Yeah. That's yeah. all she likes about him. There you go. The stuff I think about when no one's around. Yeah. They, yeah. <laughs> what, else, what, else, what other DVDs? Uh, Eastern Promises, American oh. History X, uh, some like Paw Patrol thing that Eli was excited about. So we let him let him take it, let him buy it. <laughs> and then I found an, a vinyl, Joe. A vinyl? Normally these places, okay. they don't they don't have good vinyls. Normally it's just like the, the crap, like they'd be like Andy Gibb and like 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 Andy Williams and a bunch of other people named Andy. Like it's yeah. just like off, like the worst music ever. Oh, but yeah. I found... So this year I've been listening to a lot of the Kingston Trio because mm, mm. it's it's a group that my grandfather grew up loving and he just passed. So in honor of him, I've been listening to a mm-hmm. lot of that. And I found 
their original album on vinyl and it was just like chilling there and, I, and i've never seen anything that i ever liked in this place until this moment i had to play on the record player it was immaculate it looked brand new really okay like, I'm, i was shocked i don't know if someone cleaned it or what but like it looks it looked literally brand new like the inside the outside oh. it was dated so it looked like the original one it was you know, a little torn oh, a little, faded yeah, yeah it had that has that the old smell like the vinyl smell oh great smell you should make that's that great. into a cologne a cologne. fantastic smell good smell and uh, so smell i was so excited person. about it because like, i cannot believe this is just sitting right here and I, bought it, <laughs> and I listened to it and i was like this is this is the greatest day in a long time. um <laughs> So this thrift store was it kind of similar to you know the Goodwill stores? Those are good. Yeah, yeah. Basically, basically, it, I, I forget the name of it. It's called like the Island Thrift, and it's just this mom and pop place, and they get tons of stuff. Like there's always like fun electronics and like video games and all this stuff. So I always like to go in there to like try to like take a trip down. Yeah, take me there. Mem- ta- take memory us there. lane. We'll yeah, we, we can totally yeah. go there. Like today, I saw they have so they have like a se- like a secret little corner. Where there's like, well, they tend to put like gaming things because they know it, like, it's like a secret place. <laughs> so it's like the very back of the store. Backwards you turn gamers. left and it's like all the way down in this little corner. And yep. like, I've, I've like never seen people there, but I always go there because that's where all the devices are. There was like a PlayStation 3, there was Xbox 360, there's a Wii, there's all these things. I was like, this is pretty cool. I didn't get any of it because I was with my wife and she doesn't approve, but, um, but then at the front of the store, they have like a locked armoire cabinet thing. And they always put electronics in here. So that it'll be like like really nice cameras and like, you know, camcorders and whatever. But they had an original N- uh, NES. Huh. Like, like the, the first ever video game system from Nintendo yeah. was there. And they, they wanted 300 bucks for it. And I was like, that's way too much. <laughs> yep. But I thought that was pretty cool. Yep. Right, so I saw that. I was tempted to, but I was like, I I just, I have to not spend Conserve. money. Conserve. Yeah. But, um, yeah. So we should go there. Because it is, it's a fun place. They have tons of clothes. And it's, it's, it's a huge place. Very big. Mm-hmm. And I've been really tempted into like older electronics recently. Like I want a DVD player, and I want like a VHS player, and I want VHS tapes. You know? Yeah, get them VHS tapes. I still have my Blu-ray it. player over there. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, I the, my the PlayStation is a Blu-ray player, so I, we've been doing that. But just to like own things, you know, I want to own DVDs, VHS players. Just... I mean, you can find them at any Goodwill. I know for like. 10 bucks, 10 bucks. If yeah. even that and these dvds it was there were three dollars and 99 cents a dvd hmm. and they were half off because they had like a sale that day for dvds so literally i bought i bought 10 dvd 10 dvds and it was like 15 dollars or something like that <laughs> like it was insane it's like, it's like this is amazing break. joe tell me about your life how are things uh started swim coaching um i've been a swimmer for a while uh as from anybody who's listening uh my previous conversations with zach we were both swimmers um a lot of swimmers uh from where i'm at right now that are just uh a lot of them some experienced some like not experienced but i was able to get them pretty far in one length of the pool uh shallow end deep end which in such a short span of time it was so great, just so well, great. I mean, I heard that they were beating Michael Phelps' records already. So. <laughs> In the span of like three days, how do they do that? <laughs> uh, all the power from the Almighty. Joe's um, an amazing coach. I try. Also, I to, the cocaine helps. A lot of patience. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, another thing I've been doing, uh, I was telling Zach this last episode, uh, I had spoken on and off for the past two months from a British guitarist who, uh, actually a uh, guitarist in Scotland, more specifically, uh, who plays praise and worship uh, music, same type of church that I go to. Uh, mm-hmm. So I was just talking like, hey, I'm feeling kind of like stuck with my tone, like, 
do you offer like any like consultation? He's like, yeah, just, just 50 bucks or something like that. I was like, sure. Which turned out to be like 39 pounds or something like that. If we talk about like PayPal conversion. So him and I talked for a good, like two hours. Uh, he offers some friendly advice, not exactly like, I don't have to follow this advice if I have to get more products because my board, like he was like, you're doing great. All of your gear is looking good. Uh, These are just like some pointers that I have for you. And I was like, great. It was actually a great conversation. Uh, Him and I like exchanged information for contact and uh, yeah. Um, I had a a good time. That's great. It's always nice to hear from other people and to, get other people's feedback on things. Like I I think that's really We played like so much email tag because he was, one experiencing covid he got like uh he just got married and his wife uh at his actually at his wedding is like line six helix which is a a pedal uh no not helix so his line six hx stop which uh is like a pretty small pedal but it's like a- emulating amps for anybody listening who doesn't really know guitar stuff um it got stolen at his wedding oh no and it's like a 600 hundred dollar like little doohickey it's funny that you say I had a I had a line six helix that was stolen from me, actually. Dude, too. those things are powerhouses. Yeah. At least I think it was a helix. Maybe it was a helix. It was like a it was like a little red red thing. Mm-hmm. Maybe it's a helix. Maybe I think it's something else. But I had one and it was like an emulator. And um Yeah, it's like it gold to a lot of musicians. Because the sounds of it are so realistic you could get like a fender or a marshall sound or a vox style amp like that and mm. it's click of a button you make like an entire rig all digitally um which some purists like might not exactly enjoy but at the same time like if you combine like your actual pedals with uh some digital stuff too i think that could be good analog yeah. digital little hybrid exactly yeah, it was so. definitely not a Helix, so that was wrong. <laughs> what I had. I had, Some a, red. I had a Pocket Pod. That's what it was. Pocket Pod. Yeah, yeah, I've seen that before. Yeah, I had that, and it was stolen from me. I, I had it in a little, like, a drawstring bag, mm-hmm. and I left it somewhere. Dude, that's like and, Strike 2. Somebody stole your a Martin guitar and the Line 6 Pod. Yeah, I've had some, some things stolen from me, which is no bueno. Dude. But so I, I only use this thing like maybe once or twice, and then mm-hmm. all of a sudden it was gone. any good. I, I liked it when I used it. Yeah. Oh, had a couple times. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, brother. It's okay. <laughs> so what we would all like you to do right now is please subscribe to Seizing Valor on YouTube, like this video, please, and share this to any person that you feel might benefit from this content. Honestly. This is not just content for men, though it is geared towards it. I think a lot of people can get a lot of different uh, different insight on it, a lot of different perspective on it uh, from two and mostly three guys. Uh, Zach, we miss you. Um, but also you can check us out at Instagram. It's also at Seizing Valor. Then also we are on Spotify. So our episodes on there, video format, Seizing Valor, our name does not change. Hopefully, if not, we're hacked into. If you guys want to check out uh maybe a more one-on-one conversation you can check out our email seizingvalor at gmail.com if you want to keep your conversations with us private or your prayer intentions private or you can comment on our videos or our instagram post thank you for today and for the blessings that you've given us thank you for this opportunity to take a, a magnifying glass to our culture and to 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 see oftentimes the, the negatively depicted male in, in media. And I just pray that we can understand what it truly means to be a man and to, to give us the courage and the fortitude, the, um, all of the, the, the virtues to help us achieve that goal. And, you know, that goal of, of, of sacrifice and, and uh, cultivation and, and, and protection and ultimately to draw near to you and as a result we oftentimes can grow in these virtues the closer that we are to you and so just just remind us that each and every day and help us remove distractions out of our lives and to to recognize when, when something isn't really helping us isn't isn't really 
uplifting us or, or, or aiding in our spiritual life, that we can have the courage to remove it and to fill it instead with something that would benefit us in our, our relationship. Thank you for all that you've done. I love you, Lord. In your precious and holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you all for attending, and we will see you all next week. Bye, guys. Peace out.